I know we don't have the words up there. I do. I have the words right here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's why you should always bring your sword. Amen. Because you just don't know. You just don't know when the power uh, goes out. Amen. Or whatever. You know, technical difficulties. Amen. So, always come with your sword in hand. Whether it's, and some of you, I know you have it in your app and so forth. So I know some of you aren't, aren't watching the football game or some. I believe. Yeah, if I hear any touchdowns or whatever, then I know you're not watching the game, right? But let's pray. Father, as we get into your precious word this morning, thank you so much again for the opportunity to spend time in your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And thank you, Father God, for teaching us through your word the things you want us to learn. Thank you for ministering to our hearts, that we're, you're, you're building us up with your word. And we're going from glory to glory to glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And thank you for utterance. All right, go to 1 Peter chapter 5, if you have your Bibles. 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'm going to start reading in verse 8. Remember last week I started a new series from, uh, that kind of continues from the series on endurance. Because remember we talked a lot about endurance, but I said that I would start a new series that, that kind of matches up where we left off. And it's called, What the God of All Grace Does for You. Amen? And it, let's read it in verse 8. It says, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. How many believe we're living in evil times? Yeah. We're living in bad times. And so that's why we have to be what? We have to be vigilant. Amen? We have to be sober. Amen? We talked about it. Being cool, being, being vigilant, being firm. Resist the devil, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion. Listen, he's seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't have to devour you. If he knows who you, you know what I'm saying? You need to let him know. Give him the point. Amen? The word of God. Amen? And so the Bible says in verse 9, Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Amen? See, Peter was writing to a church that was being persecuted and going through some tough times. And listen, what the enemy and, and the world is after is after your stand on God's word. Because remember, when the sower sows the word, it says the enemy comes and steals right away the word from their heart. Why? So it wouldn't take root. So don't be shocked and surprised if you're going through trials, tribulations, persecutions, whatever. You shouldn't be shocked or surprised. Why am I going through this? Don't tr See, the enemy would like to make you feel like, man, I can't, I'm the only one that's going through what I'm going through. No, we live in a fallen world and we also live, you have an enemy out there that wants to steal the word of God from your heart. That wants you to stop believing and trusting God. Amen? So that's why the Bible says, look, your brotherhood are experiencing these same things. They're going through tough times. They're going through challenges and whatever. Again, trying to steal the word out of your heart. Right. And we're supposed to stand on God's word. Amen. Amen? And so that's why he says, resist them steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But then verse 10 says, but here's the good thing though. See, you're, you're to resist, you're to stand, you're, and so forth. But then notice what God will do. Verse 10. But may the God of all grace, amen, thank God for the grace of God. May the God of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory, listen, after, in, by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, come on now, going through whatever it is you're going through, after you have suffered a while, what will He do? He will what? Perfect. What else? establish what else strengthen and what else he's going to settle you that's good notice what God will do even though you're going through these tough times and so forth so on God is saying that he's and we talked about this last week that he that he perfects you the Lord will perfect the things that concern you and your life no matter where you're at no matter what you're going through God it's saying that God is working out his plans for your life I gave the example last week of, of my situation going through a divorce and everything. And that was one verse uh, uh, my sister-in-law Juanita had given me, Psalm 138, that said, The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So even though I was going through that tough time, that scripture was telling me what? God's going to work everything out for the good in your life, even though you're going through what you're going through. Amen. He's going to perfect those plans in your life. And he did. Amen. Later on he called me to go to Bible school. And these, all these other things worked out because of it and so forth. 
even though I'd gone through that. And, and so God perfected those things that concern my life and is still doing it, and for you too. But listen, it says further in that scripture, though, the Lord perfects that which concerns me. Why? Because His love or His mercy endures forever. So in other words, it's because of God's love that He's not done with us. Amen? He's working on our behalf. And if you're going through a tough time, you got to realize that God still loves you. He has not, He's not done with you. He's got a plan for your life. And He's not done. If you're breathing and you're here, you were in God's mind before the world began, the Bible says. Before, before time began, it, it, we were saved. God had us in mind with, to put His purpose and His grace in our life before time began. So, so God saw us in Christ before even He made the worlds. So the fact that you were in God's mind before He ever created every, anything is a pretty amazing scripture showing that you're not an accident if you're here. Amen. 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 So if you're here, God had you here. You, you have a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. And, and, and God has graced you for what He's called you to do. Amen? And so, last week we talked about He's perfecting, the, He's going to perfect the things that concern your life. Why? Because His love continues forever. Because He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you unconditionally whether you're walking as you should be walking or not. His love never changes. But if you understand how much He loves you, it will change you. Amen. 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 It will change you. Amen? And so last week we talked about it. He's perfecting the things that concern you. He will perfect you. But what's the next one? He will what? Establish you. So to this morning, I want to focus on this next one here. The Lord will establish you. Amen? So I want you to, uh, that word establish means, in the NLT means support. In the Amplified it says establish and ground you securely. Vines says that the word means to fix or make fast or to set, I like to add, like a foundation. Amen? So not only will God work pl plans out for your life, He's, he's going to perfect the things that concern your life. This next ver part of the verse is saying He's going to establish you. That means He's going to what? He's going to make you firm. He's going he's gonna to what? He's going to set you like a foundation. He's, you're going to be fixed. You're going to be immovable. Come on now. You're going to be established. Amen? In fact, Romans chapter 16, I'm going to go there. Romans chapter 16, verse 25, says this. Now to him who is able to, it says, establish you. Who is able to establish you? God is, right? That's what we're talking about. God said, hey, you may be suffering, you may be going through stuff, but God's going to perfect the things that concern you, and he's also going to establish you. So he says, now to him who is able to establish you, According to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations. Amen. So notice, he says, not to him who is able to what? Establish you. Let me look at this. I'm going to, let me read that in a couple of translations. Amplified says it this way. It says, uh, uh, now to him who is able to strengthen you in the faith which is in accordance with my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Um, the, the NCV, New Century Version, says this. Glory to God who can make you strong in faith. Look at who's going to make you strong? He is strong in faith. But how though? By the good news that I tell people. See, it's the gospel that strengthens you. The good news about what Jesus did for you. Amen? And then uh, uh, the message says it this way. All praise rises to the one who is strong enough to make you strong. Exactly as preached in Jesus Christ. Precisely as revealed in the mystery kept secret for so long. Amen? So notice, God is, He's the one who will establish you according to what? Listen, you can only get established according to the good news. If you don't hear the gospel, the good news, you can be established in other stuff that's not correct. But according to Paul says, you're going to be established according to the gospel, according to the good news that I've preached to you. That's where you get established. So what is that pointing? Back to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, and then go to 2 Thessalonians 3. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Somebody's in. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. 
<laughs> yes. I'm going to start reading in verse 1 to read it in context. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified. This is 2 Thessalonians 3 1. 3, 1. Just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. Now listen, you know what? This is why it's so vital that you pray for people. Notice what he said, pray for us, that we may be what? Delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. How many know we live in a, in a bad world as far as there's wickedness out there? Not everybody, not everybody has faith. Yeah. Amen? Amen? In fact, one translation put it this way. Not all who he thought were believers were believers. There's some that can be professors of faith, but not possessors of faith. See? And that's why some people can't understand. Well, they, they go to church and whatever, and look at how they're doing and living and whatever and so forth. So, well, if they're truly, I mean, if they're truly saved, eventually fruit will come out. Yes. It might be little fruit, but it'll eventually come out. <laughs> Amen? But if it's for 30 years and there's no evidence of fruit, they might be a professor, just because I live in a Christian nation, so I'm, I consider myself a Christian. No, 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 no. That doesn't save you. Amen? And so there's some people who can be professors, but not possessors of salvation. And that answers the question, well, Pastor, I can't believe these people that are attending. Whatever. Well, first of all, examine the fruit. Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know them. Yeah. Amen? So, so again, but, uh, yeah, be it, but I still believe it. If it's a true believer, uh, uh, I remember one time Brother Hayden dealt with a, a gentleman in his church that just, you know, he just couldn't get it together. You know what I'm saying? Th you know, doing his own thing, just couldn't get together. And, and he, he had, anyway, he was, a situation happened where, and he was going to pray for him to be, you know, receive his healing. And he said, the Lord, again, this might mess up your theology, but he said the Lord stopped him from praying for him. And he's like, but Lord, no, you're, so he was going to, you know, for him to get, he says, no, no, no. He says, he was, you know, he was already up in age and whatever. He says, let him come home. <laughs> he, this is the best, and the Lord told him, this is the best he's walked with me. <laughs> he's got things in, this is, <laughs> like for the last two weeks, he's been enjoying me and whatever. He's been like walking. Let's, just let him come home. <laughs> Think about that. Talk about grace, Right? Because it is. We're saved by the grace of God. So all that other time, he was walking worldly and whatever, but yet, why? Salvation is by grace through faith. Amen. It's not by our works. But yet the Lord said, let him come home because he had already, you know, he had struggled and, you know, he didn't, you know what I'm saying, off and on and walking and whatever. And Lord, just let him come home. Amen. Amen. So, so see, God, God is a God of goodness and grace and whatever. But again, if it's a true believer, eventually, just like him, he was struggling. In fact, when he went, when Pastor when Brother Hagen went to go minister to him as a pastor, he could tell his heart was like the guy was like weeping because he had failed again. So you see, he was a true believer. See what I'm saying? He felt bad because he wasn't you know what I'm saying. And and it, it was like a like a little child. He said, "Jesus, let's let him come home. I want him here now." <laughs> Amen. So again, that might mess up your theology, but you just, you see, that's why you can never judge every situation because you don't know what's really going on behind the scenes. Amen. Some things that happen, people left, you just don't know. And I, don't get me wrong, we believe the best and we choose to stand on God's word and whatever, but there's wicked people out there. Amen? And, and we don't know the situations of why and, and so forth. We don't know if, uh, in this situation that just happened, we don't know everything that was spoken. We don't know everything that was said. We don't know uh, uh, all the situation that God may have been dealing with somebody about dealing with it. We don't know. Yeah. Amen. So that's why we got to believe the best Amen. and pray and continue, though, to pray for God to watch over your family over your loved ones, over our church. And I want you to know, as your pastor, we are actually, uh, we, we, are, we already were, had some, uh, you know, been working on a system to protect us here in case uh, anything were to happen like that. We already have, but we're actually working on it even more. To, to Why? Because first of all, prayer. Amen? And I remember one time, Hagee, he's at his church, somebody came actually with a, and walked in, and try to try to uh, 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 sh uh, you know, I think it was after going after Hagee, but we know what happened. He said when that this guy walked in, 
and this guy pulled out the gun and whatever, all the big strong muscle men, they hit the deck, man. <laughs> and it was the older ladies, the prayer warriors that stood up and we bind you in the name of Jesus. You were, They used their, their authority and took authority. And I don't, yeah, I don't think he, they got him in any way. But, the, but, all the, but he said he was laughing. Now afterwards he was laughing because all the big strong men were on the deck like crawling, like <laughs> trying to get away. <laughs> and the old prayer warrior ladies were like, in the name of Jesus, I bind you and taking authority over that. Amen? You can, you have authority over that. So yes, that's number one. We'll take authority, but we also have to do natural things for our purposes and for legal purposes and so forth, so on. Why? Because not everybody has faith. Amen. So you have to do what's natural and it's natural to take care of those things and so forth, so on. So I want you to know, as a body, we are doing uh, uh, some things to protect our kids and so forth and so on. And uh, I, I've ordered some things for our kids' rooms and stuff like that. Amen. So, so again, those are things we... It's not a shame that we have to do that. Yes. It's just a shame that we're living in the world today that we have to do that. Yes. Amen. But don't ever let fear come in and say, I'm, oh, I'm not going to go to church no more because that happened or whatever. No, no, no. If anything, it, it, yeah, that can happen anywhere. Look, I mean, you could be riding you know bike like it happened in New York and whatever it can happen that's why you pray and believe God to protect every day amen, amen. believe God that your angels are watching over you right. wherever you go amen amen, amen. my angels do, are not don't, my angels do not get off guard they're always on duty amen, amen. always believe your angels are, are on duty now where was I let's keep reading um, he says that we may be delivered from unreasonable wicked men, for not all have faith. Look at verse 2, 3. But the Lord is what? Faithful who will, here it is. He will what? Establish you. The Lord's going to establish you. And listen, he'll guard you from the evil one. See, the, the, see, the enemy may, may try stuff or whatever, but the enemy can't touch you. The devil can't touch you. Now, he may try to hurt, and he did hurt people, you know, in their bodies or whatever, but he can't touch your spirit. He can't hurt you. Amen? And, and, and of course, you know, we stand on God's word, so he won't touch any part, any other part. Amen? But notice, the Lord, will, he will establish you and guard you from the evil one. That's a great verse to stand on. God's going to guard you from the evil one. Amen? He will guard you from the evil one. And then, it says, and then he says in verse uh, uh, 4, And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you both, that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. Notice, your focus should be on the love of God yeah. and the patience of Christ. Focus on that and let God take care of the rest. Amen? So notice, God is faithful. He's going to do what? He's going to establish you and guard you from the evil. Amplify says He will set you on a firm foundation. God's going to set you on a firm foundation. Now, let's talk about what He's going to establish you in. Let's talk real quick about what the Lord will establish you in. Go to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians, next, chap, next uh, book there. Well, actually, we're already there, aren't we? So 2 Thessalonians, back up to 2. And verse 16. Notice what it says. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and our God and Father, who has what? Loved us and given us what? Everlasting consolation. That's like comfort. And good hope. How does he do it? By grace. How does God give us everlasting comfort? By his unmerited favor. May he what? Comfort your hearts. Come on now. And establish you. Here's the first two things God will establish you in. In every good what? Word and work. So you see here, he's going to establish you in every good what? Word. That's the first one. So in other words, what is he talking about? In what you say and in what you do. He's saying, may God establish you, set you firm in every good what? Word and work. Or in what you say and in what you do. So it's, it affects the way you live and the way you speak. God will establish you. He'll set you firm. So, what, so next time you're being tempted, boom, the word of God will rise up on the inside of you. Amen. And, and the Holy Spirit will remind you of those things. And so you speak God's word. 
Amen? So he's going to establish you what? In every good word, in every good work. In fact, Psalm 40, and let me just go there real quick. Psalms chapter 40, as far as the area of work, notice what it says in Psalms chapter 40, verse 1 and 2 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. And listen, and he what? Established my steps. Come on now. Notice what the psalmist is saying. The Lord is the one that established my steps. See, God's got a, a, a firm foundation to, for you to walk on. Amen? Remember, all the other world, like that song says, is on sinking sand. But you got a firm foundation to walk on. You're walking on the rock. Amen? And then check out this one. There's another. So God's going to establish us in every good what thing we say and every good thing we do. But the third thing He's going to establish us, go to 1 Thessalonians, back up to the next, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Chapter 1 and, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 11. Now look at what it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 11. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you so that he may... <laughs> Is that talking to me? <laughs> He's, yeah, I got to have the word read to me, okay? I mean, is that... <laughs> Listen, he says, so that he may, what? Establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God, Father, at the coming, at, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So what's this talking about? God's going to establish your heart for the Lord's coming. Amen? In fact, look at James 5, 7, and 8. James chapter 5, 7, and 8. God's going to establish your heart for the Lord's coming. In James chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Listen. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord is at hand. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord of the Lord is at hand. But notice, Thessalonians said that the Lord is going to establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. And then, here's a, of course, this one's very important because we talk about this a lot, but you need to see it for yourself. Go to Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. We're going to start reading in verse 7. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7. Remember those who rule over you. And who have spoken the word of God to you, whose faith follow, considering the outcome of their conduct. Amen? So in other words, when you're following a leader or somebody, he says, he says remember them. Listen, you're supposed to follow their faith, but keeping an eye on their conduct. Mm -hmm. Amen? You don't follow their conduct if their conduct is not good. Follow their faith. Again, again you check fruits, in other words. Right? But check this out, verse 8. Why? This is in context. Why? Because when Jesus is in somebody's life, it'll be, he will begin to affect their life that there'll be a consistency in their life. Right. You'll know when God's maturing in you and you're growing. Why? There will be a consistency uh, in your life. Listen to what it says. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ is what? The same. In other words, Jesus don't change. But now look at what the next verse says. This is in context now. Right? Oops, my thing moved when I moved. What did I say verse? Okay. Here it is. So Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen. So do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. Come on now. Don't be carried about with what? Various and and strange doctrines. Amen? He says, why? For it is good that the heart be established by grace. Amen. 
not with foods which have not profited those who have been occupied with them. Amen. See, in, the, in, in that religion, in the Jewish, there was a lot of the dealing with washings and foods and different things and so forth, so on. And, and so he knew people were going to get caught up in that. And we see that today too. Right? Yeah. Nothing, nothing against you if you have a diet or whatever and stuff like that and so forth. But this is the only way and whatever. I, you know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about that. In fact, uh, in another place, Paul says there's doctrines of demons that are out there. And one of them is this. Forbidding people to marry and, and, and to stay away from certain foods which God said you could receive through thanksgiving and prayer. Amen. Amen. See, you, you can't get caught up in stuff like that. You got to stay hooked up with the gospel, with the good news about what Jesus talked about here. And that's why he says, instead, let your heart be established by the grace of God. Amen? That's what he's saying. Focus on that. Get your heart established uh, uh, with, the, with the grace of God. In fact, let me read this from... Um, let me read it to you from the Amplified first, verse 9. And the Amplified says it this way. I love the way it says it. It says, Do not be carried about by different and varied and alien teachings. For it is good for the heart to be established and ennobled and strengthened by means of grace, God's favor and spiritual blessing. And not to, not to be devoted to food, rules of diet, and ritualistic meals, which bring no spiritual benefit or profit to those who observe them. Come on now. Isn't that something? Look, look at what it says. In, I like the way it says it in the message. Check this out. The message says, Don't be lured away from him by the latest speculations about him. The grace of Christ is the only good ground for life. Amen. Come on now. Amen. The grace of Christ is the only good ground for life. Amen. Amen. Products named after Christ don't seem to do much for those who buy them. <laughs> like testaments. I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Remember that? I used to see that at the Christian bookstore. Testaments. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> oh Lord, help us. Amen. <laughs> but listen, but how do we get our hearts established by grace? You know how you get your hearts established by grace? By focusing, by being established in His righteousness. Amen? By focusing and being established. Isaiah 54, 14 says this. You need to be, the way you're going to be established in grace is by what? Focusing in his, on His righteousness. And on the gift of righteousness that Jesus gave you. Isaiah 54, listen to what it says here. Isaiah 54, verse 14 says, In righteousness you shall be established and you, listen, when you're established in God's righteousness, you, in other words, that you're right with God, you shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear. Why? Because when you know you're right with God, and God loves you unconditionally, and you're right with Him, then there's no fear. You don't have to worry that it's God's going to punish you or whatever, because you know in your heart that you're right with God. He says, you're going to be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Amen? Listen. It shall not come near you. See, we got to stand on that. We got to believe that. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and then Romans five seventeen says that it that that those who have received I'm quoting it, but let me read it to you. Romans chapter five verse seventeen says, "For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive an abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness." will reign in life through the one G. See, that will establish you. Un receiving an abundance of grace and the gift of what? Righteousness. Amen? Remember, in Romans 10, the, Paul said that the Is Israelites, they're going about trying to establish their own righteousness and they haven't submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to those who believe. To everybody, who, to those who believe, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. See, so, so if you're going to be established in God's grace, you've got to understand righteousness, that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? And then the other thing you need to be established, if you're going to be established in the grace of God, is you've got to get established in, 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 in the faith. Colossians 2, 6 and 7 says this. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 Notice it says, As you therefore have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. How did, how did you receive Jesus? 
by grace through what? Faith. You receive Jesus how? By grace through faith. Therefore, he says, continue to walk that way. See, everything you get from God is by grace through faith. It's not by what you do. It's still by your faith in what he's done. Let me say that again. It's not by what you do that you get the blessings. It's by what he did and your faith in what he did. Amen? 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 So what's prayer then? It's, it's your access. It's, it's the way to receive the grace of God. It's the way to access the grace of God by faith. That's your faith in, in action where you're receiving the grace of God. So that's why you pray. But God doesn't bless you. In fact, we, you know, in, in, in GLU, we went through three, for three months, we went through the whole Old Testament and start looking, is God, if God's the same yesterday, today, forever, then that means His grace should be in the Old Testament too. You should, Talk to any one of our students that went through it. You're shocked how much it talks about the love of God that even Jonah said. That's why I didn't want to go preach in Nineveh because I know you to be a gracious and a loving God and you're going to forgive them. Amen. Jonah knew his, God's character. He's a loving and a gracious God. Yes. Amen. In fact, in, 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 one, in, in the, one of the first five books, God said, hey, listen, yeah, I want you to walk a holy life, but listen, I want you to know though, I'm not blessing you because you deserve it, for you are a stiff-necked people. In other words, you're stubborn. You should have seen all the times. And when you see how wicked and stubborn the people were and how gracious God was, it blows you away. And, and, and God says, I'm blessing you. It, it, it's because of my holiness that I'm blessing you, not because of yours. And it's because of my name that I'm blessing you, not because of what you've done. So, even, so he would remind them, listen, I am blessing you, but don't forget, it's not because you're good enough, in other words, because you, in fact, in fact, uh, there's a scripture, or the scripture that says, uh, 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 if, if you take, if, uh, if you, a gar you touch a garment that's unclean, I mean, if, if somebody that touches something dirty, and, they, and then they touch somebody else, will they become unclean? Yes, in the Allah it says yes. But, but, you know what? Yet, here's Jesus, and he, here comes Jesus, and he touched somebody that was unclean, a leprous man, and he made the unclean clean. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the only one that can make the un... Because see, leprosy is a type and symbolism of sin in the Bible. So, so the leper said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And what did Jesus say? I am willing. And he touched him and said, be thou clean. So Jesus is the only one that can make the unclean clean clean Amen. and that's why remember Peter when he got that vision from heaven a sheet came down and God told Peter what I call clean don't you call unclean Amen. so that's the way God sees people in Christ he sees them what clean why because Jesus made us clean amen amen, amen? better than oxy clean <laughs> amen so look at this let me wrap this up here Verse 6, listen. So as you therefore receive Christ Jesus, walk in Him. Listen, rooted and what else? Built up in Him and established in the faith as you have been what? Taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So God wants you what? Established in what you believe in this faith in Christ Jesus. So listen, how are you going to grow in grace? Be established, amen, and, and, and knowing that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And be established in your faith and what you believe in Christ Jesus. Be established in His finished work and what He did for us. Because that's where you got righteous. You became righteous because of His work. Now, let me end by talking about how you can allow Him to establish you. Let me talk about three ways that you can allow Him to establish you. You can allow Him to establish you, number one, and this is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. You can allow him to establish you. I'm going to, read, I'm going to start reading in verse 1. Therefore, when we could no longer endure it, we thought it, good, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to what? Okay. To establish you, listen, and encourage you, what? Concerning your faith. Listen, people, that's why church is so important. So in other words, you, you need to allow ministers to encourage and strengthen you. Cons if, hey, if Paul said, I'm sending Timothy...
to what? To establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm your pastor. God sent me, what? To establish you and encourage you concerning what you believe, concerning your faith in Jesus. That's, why, that's what church is about. That's why we're here. That's the purpose of church, to, to, to build each other up in the Lord. Amen? So, uh, so allow ministers. Amen? Keep an open heart and allow ministers to speak into your heart. Amen? And to encourage you concerning your faith and so forth. The second way that you can allow him, God to establish you and so is number two, go to Second Peter no, there first, and I'll show you where to go. Second Peter, chapter two, verse uh, twelve. Let's start reading at verse twelve. Look at what it says. Wait a minute. No, it's First Peter. I think it's 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. No, it isn't. Okay, I'll find it. Oh, it is. It is 2 Peter. I'm sorry. 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 12. Okay, we got it? 2 Peter, chapter 1. That's what it, I went to the wrong chapter is what happened. Amen? Yeah, 2 Peter, chapter 1. Let's start reading in verse... 12, look at this. Huh? Yeah, 2 Peter chapter 1, right? Yes. Verse 12, okay. Then why does this look... Oh, because I'm... Hi, yeah, yeah, I'm in 2 Peter. I mean, 1 Peter. Okay, I'll get it right. Okay, here it is. Peter says this. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things. He's talking about the truths in the Bible. Though you know and are what? Established in the present truth. See, Peter said, hey guys, I've been around you for a while, and I see that you're established in the present truth. But yet, Peter, what does Peter say? Again, even though you are, come on now. He says, even though you are for this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things, though you know and are established in the present truth. Yes, I think it is right, he says next verse, as long as I am in this tent... Peter calls his body a tent. Come on. See, Peter, no, we're here temporarily. Amen? To stir you up. Listen. To stir you up by what? Reminding you, knowing that surely I must put off my tent, just as our Lord Jesus Christ showed me. Moreover, I will be careful, next verse says, to ensure that you always have a what? A reminder of these things after my decease. So Peter says, when I die... I'm going to make sure that somebody else is going to remind you of these truths. So what does this tell you? Even though you think you know it, right. even though you heard it before and you think, I already know about faith, I already know about grace, I already know about God's love, I already know. Peter says, you got to keep hearing it, you got to keep re being reminded of it, you got to stir yourself up in it. Why? Because you're hearing all negative out there in the world is, is telling you something different, that you're not worth anything, that you have no value, that you're, you're not important. Amen? But the Lord is, Peter is saying, no, you got to remind yourself, amen? Out there in the foyer, we got this, our identity brochure. Have you, it's there for anybody who wants to use it. It shows you who you are in Christ. You can quote, speak that word of God over you. It's what we use at GLU. We've used it before. I taught that whole series. But, you know, are you doing that? You can do that for yourself. If you feel like you got to stay, in, just because you think I already know that, doesn't mean you got, that you can't continue to hear it. You got to continue to remind. Peter said, I'm going to keep reminding you, even though you're a established in the present truth so allow others number two allow others to remind you to keep you established in the present truth that's the purpose of our groups I already talked number one about the purpose of church but number two this is the purpose of our groups amen where you get around others and listen you get around the word and you're what are you doing you're you're encouraging one another establishing each other why staying firm is being established in your present truth why because again if you don't you will tend to wander away from the truth because there's so much negative negativity out there that will pull you away I'm almost done number three the third thing I want you to go to Job or for those of you that never heard about Job before, Job. <laughs> I remember some ministers would say, go to Job. Amen. And the, I remember one minister said that 
he thought the 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 epistles were the the wives of the apostles. <laughs> the epistles were the wives of the who's epistle? Not the wife of the apostle. <laughs> Job, go to Job twenty two. <laughs> Lord help us. Listen, notice this scripture. You, here's a third way you can allow him to establish you. You will also what? Declare a thing and it will be what? Established for you. Glory to God. 22, oh, I didn't tell you. 22, 28. 22, 28. Job 22, 28. You will also declare a thing. Listen. And it will be what? Established for you. So light will shine on your ways. Isn't that good? Yeah. Declare a thing. So, so the third way, the third way you will get established, again, is you declare and speak the truth. Declare, or, you know, believe it, but speak it. If you believe it, speak it. Eventually, if you really believe something, you know, and it's true, whatever you believe is going to come out of your mouth. Amen. So eventually, whatever you believe is going to come out of your mouth. Amen? And so, and so whatever you're full of is usually what you'll be believing and it will eventually come out of your mouth. Yeah, Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever you're filling yourself up with is going to eventually... But here, if you want to get established in, you know, uh, by the Lord, you've got to allow Him by what? Speaking and declaring the truth over your life. And it will become what? Established. Amplified says, You shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Isn't that good? If you'll, if you'll what? Decide and decree a thing. Amen? Make a decision. Paul says, I believe, therefore I speak. He said in another verse. I believe, therefore I speak. Or, or the psalmist says, we believe, therefore we speak. We also believe. And therefore we speak. Amen? Why? Paul says, why do I have boldness in what I'm sharing? Why? Because I really believe what, I, what I'm speaking. I believe it. Amen? So you shall decide and decree a thing, and it shall be what? Established for you, and the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Amen? So again, how can you allow God to, to establish you? Allow ministers to encourage and strengthen you concerning your faith. Allow others to remind you to keep you established in the present truth. And you yourself declare and speak that truth over yourself, and it will become established in you. Amen. Amen. It's so important. You see, we don't treat it lightly that if it's not it's not that important for me to speak the word of God over myself. It's very important. It will affect your life. It'll affect the way you see yourself. It'll change everything. It'll get rid of fear. It'll get rid of doubt. It'll get rid of all the junk. And, and that way you're focused on, on, on his word. Amen. On what he says. And notice it will become established in your life if you do it. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father Thank you for your word. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love, Father. Let's make this confession of faith in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word this morning. I stand upon your word. And I stir myself up by reminding myself of who I am in Christ and what I have in Christ. I declare, I declare that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, my is my Lord and Savior. I declare, I declare that, he that He died on the cross, was buried, was buried rose again, rose again on, the on the third day according to the Scriptures. To the scriptures. And, I and I believe Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. And, I and I believe that Jesus is my Lord. My Savior. my Savior. Jesus is my deliverer. Jesus is my, Jesus is my, healer. Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my redeemer. Jesus is my redeemer. Thank, you, Father, Thank you, Father, that I'm a new creation in Christ. Jesus. That I'm loved by you. I love you, Daddy God. I appreciate you. Jesus is my righteousness. Jesus is my holiness. 
Jesus is my freedom. Thank you, Father, for all these blessings. I thank you that I'm blessed going in. Blessed going out. My bank account is blessed. My vehicles are blessed. My house is blessed. My job is blessed. My kids are blessed. I got smart kids. They get A's at school. They're good kids. Great is their peace. They're smart. They do your will. Thank you, Father, that my family is blessed. Blessed going in and blessed going out. They're the head and not the tail. We're more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, that we always triumph in Christ Jesus. Amen.